From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Ambarian at the state capitol. I'll have a closer look at the results in the primaries for state legislative seats, where a number of incumbent lawmakers were defeated and several others won very narrow victories. Biden and Trump drawing distinctions. I'm Jared Hill with the opposing messages from the presidential candidates and what new poll numbers say about major voters' issues in a key battleground state. Good morning, Southwest Montana. Six o'clock on this Friday. Mm -hmm. And your CDO filling in for Jane while she's on vacation. Yeah, taking a few days off. And why not? Man, the temperatures are beautiful. Conditions are she wonderful. She skips town at the wrong time. That's <laughs> right. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe she's she just playing hooky. Yeah, temperatures this morning holding into the 40s and 50s. We're starting the early part of the day. Pretty quiet conditions. Mainly... Uh, clear <clears throat> skies. We will get a little bit of cloud cover here and there, but really nothing to uh, worry about. It makes for a beautiful sunrise as we're looking out this morning. Uh, temperatures expected to be into the upper 70s and low 80s. Lighter winds. We still have 10 to 20 mile an hour wind speeds, especially west of the divide for the day today. I'm going to break down that weekend forecast and any rain chances that may be popping up in just a few minutes. Alrighty, thank you, Matt. Looking forward to it. Well, the Bozeman Police Department is still on the lookout for 33-year-old Nathan Moore. Family members reported Moore missing on Wednesday, May 1st. And 25 days later, the U.S. Forest Service off a U.S. Forest Service officer recovered property along the along Moore from a bear-proof storage container at the Blackmore Campground next to Highlight Reservoir. That's when the Gallatin County Search and Rescue Team got involved. And so we started with basically creating an initial search area. Uh, we brought out dogs um, and drones and the boat team. Um, we put boats up in the, the reservoir to go around the entire bank of the entire uh, reservoir and then look like into some of the offshoots. Unfortunately, search and rescue wasn't able to find anything regarding Moore's disappearance. The search for Moore is still ongoing and SAR says that they hope to get another search party out to highlight soon. And Nathan Moore is just over six feet tall, weighs about 185 pounds, and has blonde hair and hazel colored eyes. If anyone has any information, they are asked to contact the Bozeman Police Department immediately. And Yellowstone National Park is releasing its final environmental impact statement for the management of bison within park boundaries. The statement includes three alternatives for managing the iconic animals. The Park Service says that the alternatives are based on new scientific information that was gained from bison research over the last 20 years. Now the first alternative calls for continuing the current bison management plan, which was approved 24 years ago. It calls for a population of 3,500 to 5,000 animals after spring calving. Bison populations would then be controlled by hunting and trapping of the bison and would be re relocated elsewhere. Now the second alternative would be about just the same but would allow for a maximum population of 6,000 animals. And the third alternative would do away with any trapping and relocating of animals in favor of natural selection, which generally means that predat predation by wolves and bears plus starvation during winter severe winters. The hunting and dispersal of bison to lands outside of the park would also be controlled, uh, be used by controlled numbers. The population would be allowed to reach a maximum of 7,000 animals. And the Park Service says that they will decide which plan to adopt after a 30-day waiting period beginning today. And on June 4th, Park County voters voted no on Referendum 1. The proposed referendum would have abolished Park County's growth policy, which is a roadmap that county commissions use to determine subdivision development. Now, Park County estimates that the growth policy has been essential for nearly $10 million of grants that the county has received in the last 15 years. In a statement released after the results, the treasurer of No on Referendum 1, Colin Davis, says, quote, Residents of Park County have made it clear that they want to protect local control and reject uncontrolled development. And there are still some shakeups in the Montana Legislature's Republican caucus next year as six incumbent lawmakers lost to challengers in the primary election. Our MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian breaks down what happens behind these results. In 2022, all of the incumbent Montana lawmakers who faced primary challenges won them. The situation was different this year. In total, five sitting House members and one senator, all Republicans, lost their bids for another nomination. Several more representatives were defeated while campaigning to move up to the Senate. 
In Ravalli County, Senator Teresa Manzella won nomination for a second term, holding off a challenge from Representative Wayne Rusk. Manzella chairs the staunchly conservative Montana Freedom Caucus and says the primary contests show a clear division between what she sees as constitutionally aligned Republicans and others in the party. We're thankful that we've got some strong legislators out there that are uh, either you know, new last session or coming on new this session that we believe will be uh, great assets to the team. Because we still take an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the state of Montana, and that, that really is the job. Representative Ross Fitzgerald of Power is the treasurer of Conservatives for MT, which advertised in more than two dozen GOP legislative primaries to boost what he calls common sense conservative and non-extreme candidates. Who is a really, truly conservative Republican that's representing their district and i think that's the thing of course your conscience is first constituents of second and uh, of obviously the the caucus or the party is absolutely the third and i think that's wherein lies some of the differences of opinion both groups saw some wins and some losses Tuesday. Representatives Tony Brockman and Michelle Binkley lost to challengers backed by the Freedom Caucus, while Freedom Caucus member Representative Stephen Galloway is narrowly losing, and his wife Lola Sheldon Galloway lost to Josh Kazmaier in a race between two House members seeking to move up to the Senate. Representative Caleb Hinkle, a Freedom Caucus member, defeated Representative Jennifer Carlson in the only primary contest between two incumbents. In addition, Senator Chris Fry Fidel lost to former Representative Vince Rickey, who had Freedom Caucus support, and Representative James Bergstrom lost to a candidate supported by Conservatives for MT. With results still unofficial Thursday, five GOP House primaries had candidates separated by less than 110 votes. There were only two incumbent Democratic lawmakers who faced primary challenges, and both of them won. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. This morning, President Biden and former President Trump continue to push a, to draw a clear contrast between one another. The president right now is overseas in France, calling attention to the perils of bowing down to bullies and to threats to democracy. While out west, pres former President Trump held his first campaign rally since becoming a convicted felon, highlighting a key issue, which is immigration. CBS's Jared Hill has the latest from New York. Today, President Joe Biden will deliver a major speech in France, highlighting threats to democracy, a central theme during his visit to mark the 80th anniversary of D-Day. We're living in a time when democracy is more at risk across the world than any point since the end of World War II. It's a message Biden is also hammering at home in this new campaign ad. I will defend our democracy with every fiber of my being. Yesterday in Arizona, his opponent, former President Donald Trump, held his first campaign rally since his Manhattan criminal conviction. I just went through a rigged trial in New York. Trump holds a slight lead over Biden in the battleground state, also a border state where immigration is a top issue. We will end Joe Biden's border nightmare. Supporters of the former president who braved triple digit temperatures to see him dismissed his criminal conviction. Those are false charges. They're bogus. In an interview with ABC News, President Biden again pushed back on the criticism. Look, he got a fair trial. The jury spoke like they speak in all cases, and it should be respected. Today, Trump is attending fundraisers in California as the race for his VP pick heats up. In interviews that aired last night, Trump said he'll likely announce his choice at the Republican National Convention next month. Jared Hill, CBS News. And CBS has learned that several possible vice presidential choices have been received vetting forms from the Trump campaign and that four people who have been internally discussed are m the most are North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, Senators Marco Rubio and Tim Scott and J.D. Vance, though the campaign has been cautious to not say which one will be chosen. All right, back a little closer to home. The Butte Silverbow Public Library is being honored at the Montana State Library Commission with an Elsa Award. And before you say anything, that's not a Disney Princess Award. The Elsa Award is a prestigious award that goes out to 25 libraries across Montana in recognition for the passion, dedication, and perseverance shown by library staff, directors, and board members in their everyday duties. We got uh, the 2024 Excellent Library Service Award. It's an Elsa Award, so now I kind of feel like a frozen princess. It's kind of nice. I think it's because we consistently have 
you know, good programming and, and good outreach. We're not just books. We do still have books. They're not going anywhere. But and programs have a lot of other things. Including cooking classes, and there's an event at the end of June at the community garden. The library is also offering reading challenge for kids throughout the summer. To find out more, you can visit the Butte Silver Bow Public Library's webpage. And a wall for remembering and healing, as our John Amy shows us, there's a replica of the Vietnam Memorial that will make a stop in Butte later this summer. A replica of the Vietnam Memorial is coming to Butte. It has the names of everyone who made the ultimate sacrifice in that war, including the 22 from Butte. It's known as the wall that heals. And for those who have lost relatives in that war, the pain is still fresh. I remember the day that he passed where the neighbor jumped over the fence because he heard Nana crying. Julie Clifford was just six years old when her uncle, Daniel Jan Hoonan, was killed in the war. His name will be on the three-quarter scale replica of the Vietnam Memorial coming to Butte in late August and be on display at Father Sheehan Park. The traveling memorial is designed to help fellow veterans and family members like those of Daniel Jan Hoonan find peace. Our family has worked on keeping his memory alive throughout the years. He was just a um, wonderful young guy who died far too young. Vietnam veterans like Bill Fisher are looking forward to seeing the names on the memorial. It means a lot to me because I know some of them. So when I look up a name that I recognize, it means something. Yes, it does. Marine veteran Michael Tapkin spent more than a year working to get the Wall That Heals Memorial to Butte. If I can just touch one life and help one person maybe have closure or to kickstart the PTSD healing process again, I, it'll be worth it. That's what the family of Daniel Jan Hoonan hope this memorial will do. Yes, it's going to be um, a memory that hopefully will help all of us heal more. The memorial will be on display at Father Sheehan Park from August 27th to September 2nd. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Well, you might not think of gymnastics and horses belonging together, but for those who are familiar with equestrian vaulting, the combination actually doesn't sound so strange. Our MTN's Brianna Juno has more from Hope Falls Vaulting Club following their first annual Under the Big Sky Vaulting Competition. The Hope Falls Vaulting Club made history this weekend by hosting the state's first inaugural vaulting competition. The event held at the Kings Arena outside of Great Falls saw enthusiastic participation from vaulters across the region. We travel multiple times a year to different competitions within our region and beyond. So we go all over the place and it was really nice to be able to bring one to Montana and to be able to have some of those fun clubs that we've gotten to know to come to ours. Vaulting is a unique and graceful sport combining gymnastics and dance on horseback, blending athleticism and artistry with a wild twist. Our vaulting club has about 20 competitors and amazing families that have just all pitched in and helped and their hearts and souls are in it. And you can see that and they love this sport. So they're very excited. For competitors like Kyra, this is my first competition. Practice and facing your fears is the name of the game. I always loved horses, but I was kind of terrified of them. I guess I just kind of stopped being so scared of things, got a little bit more courage. And I really trust our horses. I trust our lunger, that's a big part of it. As for Lunger, Marshall Fiedler, and Oakley the horse, it's inspiring to see the sport gaining recognition. Good to see how many people come in and just enjoy the show and to really get the word out and so that they understand what vaulting is all about. All Hope Falls vaulters received qualifying scores during the weekend's competition, and the goal? Have a chance at attending nationals. Um, we've got about nine that are looking at going to nationals this year. So this is a lot of emotions for them because they've been waiting for this. So they're very excited and I'm very proud. I'm very proud of them all. In Great Falls, Brianna Juno, MTN News. Looks hard. It does look hard. I can't even I, stand on my own I'm, two legs. I'm on impressed by ground. what's going on there. <laughs> so right, I have a pretty sweet story to show you uh, from D-Day 
celebrations oh, yeah. yesterday yeah. Th as they took a place in France. Uh, a World War II veteran actually shared a part of his letter that he wrote to his mom on that fateful day back in uh, 1944. Uh, here's what he said. He said, quote, Dear Mom, just flew a few lines to tell you that we are all okay. We flew mission number 10 on D-Day. Everything is swell. He says, we are getting American candy now. Oh, Henry, Baby Ruth, Mars, Planters, and mm. Peanuts. Uh, a bunch of world leaders gathered in France yesterday uh, to mark the celebration. Yeah, pretty, so pretty amazing, and I'm glad that they're, these uh, men and women are still able to share their story. It's pretty sweet to see, like, just the letter that he wrote to his mom. There were a ton more letters that he wrote, but that was just probably one of That's the coolest amazing. snippets that he had. So, yeah. uh, time for us to take a quick break. It's a hot one yesterday. Hot probably again today, right? Uh, we're trying. Temperatures yesterday into the 80s. We'll be following suit again this afternoon. We'll break down that complete forecast in just a few minutes. All right, and we'll take a closer look at the race to space between Boeing and SpaceX, how some technical issues might be uh, hindering their race to get up into the outer world. <laughs> 